We are welcoming back to the show Tom Saxon, and he is the co-producer and co-writer of an amazing documentary called Not Forgotten, subtitled The Untold Story of Autism in Ukraine. Tom, thank you. And Tom is joining us just via telephone, so you won't be able to see him. But Tom, thank you for joining us again. Thank you for having us. So thrilled to have you. And for people who didn't see, I guess it was about a year ago that we had you guys on the show to talk about this this film that you were at the time making. And um, you were in a contest at that time to get a grant. So you had, but let's back up a little bit and talk about what, how, what the connection with Ukraine was. Because you were the one who sort of got this ball rolling. You you went to Ukraine as, as I, you were invited to go, right? That's right. And uh, I've spent a lot of time in Ukraine over the last 14 years. And uh, But you didn't I go have, there I, to investigate autism. You went there to go no. and meet and see other things and see what, how you could be, after you went there, you saw how you could be useful with other subjects in the Ukraine. That's right. That's right. And um, I have worked with uh, uh, children with autism off and on as just a volunteer at times. So I really have a special place in my heart for them. But we really discovered in an orphanage that there was a room with 10 uh, children on the lower end of the spectrum and two teachers that were untrained. And we started taking specialists back to help the teachers uh, each summer. And then we would take parents to help the parents in Ukraine. And then it dawned on me, where are all the other autistic children, you know, the children with autism uh, in Ukraine? And we discovered that they're all uh, tucked away and most of them are sequestered in their own homes. They cannot go to school. They cannot uh, be part of any kind of uh, clinic. There are no clinics. There are no helpful things uh, in Ukraine. So we wanted to make a documentary that raised the awareness of autism as a global problem yeah. and also to start a free flow of information from the West into the east uh into the post-soviet countries yeah because I, I, tell me if i'm overstating this tom what it seems as though the story that you guys tell from the documentary it it seems as though it's still the dark ages over there in terms of autism what they know how they react to it we talk about autism yeah. awareness here and the difference between here and the ukraine it we, it might as well be 200 years ago Oh, absolutely. And the, the professionals will say all the information they have is at least 40 or 50 years old on autism, and it's mostly incorrect. And in fact, so, is it true that as, as early as 11 years ago, it was illegal to diagnose someone with autism in Ukraine? Yes, because they didn't believe it was a, yeah. uh, a disease at all or any, any, anything. They yeah. just denied it. Yeah. And so you talked, uh, a, a filmmaker who we're going to talk to in uh, just a few minutes, you talked him into coming over and seeing what the situation was, and you guys filmed and and focused on a couple of different families there about what it was like and discovered this untold story of hiding from families, not let, because it, pe people didn't want to be ostracized, a really cautionary, uh, horrific tale of the state of autism in Ukraine. But you had the footage and you needed to finish making the film so that you could get this awareness out. So we had you on the show a year ago because you were part of a contest that you were trying to win some money to finish the film. So update our viewers, what happened in that contest? Well, it was a contest uh, started by um, Cultivate Wines in California. They gave away $100,000 every year to philanthropic uh, organizations or efforts. And so many, many people submit we got a place on their docket, and it was all social media driven. It was driven by Facebook. People could vote for your documentary or your efforts or your what you were doing once a day for 90 days. And so uh, that's how you get a place. It's a $50,000 first place prize and five $10,000 prizes. Mm -hmm. And the weekend that they announced the winners, they shut off all communication so you can't know where you are oh, in the no. lineup. And so we went from 7 to 6 to 6 to 7 on Friday oh. and did not know that we had won until Monday. Really incredible. It was pretty tense. It was incredible. And our, all our friends hated us. 
And we had it all day for, for 90 days. And so, and after that, I took a break from Facebook for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I had to have I a little fast. But we went $10,000, and then we had um, an amazing gift given to us just by an individual who uh, lives here in the United States and uh, is, is Ukrainian, and it, it enabled us to make a very fine professional documentary. Wow. We interviewed 25 families from the north Kiev, the capital, down to the south Odessa on the Black Sea. 25 families with children all over the autism spectrum, and we only included five families in the documentary because the story was exactly the same wherever we went. There's yeah. no help. We don't know what to do. The government doesn't help in any way. The society is not ready for these children. They're always ostracized when they go out. And we saw some very desperate situations. And... So you were able to finish the film, and, and we're going to talk with Matt Blick in just a little while about the film and how people can tar participate, but you were telling me during the break that there's an update on two of the children who, because I need for people to understand how important it is that this information be told, but there's an update on two of the children that you featured in the documentary, uh, and so tell us what's going on. Well, uh... Five weeks ago, uh, before the premiere of the documentary, I went back to Ukraine and visited all of these families. And uh, I wanted to tell them thank you and tell them that the documentary is coming out and uh, all these things. And so I was really checking on the children, too. And I went into the first uh, home, and the child was not there. And uh, the mother said that uh, she couldn't handle it anymore, and so she gave her child up to the institution where you put children with great disabilities. And I said to her, well, what is that like? And she said, well, he's in a room every day with 20, 35 other children like him, and he was violent and uh, nonverbal. And uh, there's one untrained supervisor in there, and that's his day, every day. And it's deplorable. Yeah. There... Uh, that society does not have anywhere to value children with disabilities or anybody with disabilities. And so it's a shame-based society. Uh, and then another uh, family is working out to give their child up to an institution because they just can't handle it anymore. And these parents are in desperate situations. They're very poor, and uh, it's... Yeah. When I was told that the boy was in the room with 35 others, I just burst out and cried. Yeah, well, I, I know you can't see me right now, but I'm sitting here crying about it. i got to reach for a tissue. Um, yeah. i got to tell you, Tom, this, it kills me because, um, and I'm sure a lot of other people who are listening and watching, we know, there but for the grace of God, go I. I mean, I, I think about it and I picture my son how he was at age three and if i had lived in a society where people didn't support us and that we couldn't have gotten him help we would have been talking about my child and to think about a parent having to make that choice yeah. to give their child up to go to that sort of a setting just rips my heart out you're just walking on it with cleats um yeah. And, and, and the fact the that a second mother is going through that right now and considering giving her child up to that sort of a situation, it speaks to the desperation. Yeah, it does speak to the desperation. Here's two points. One, uh, I know for sure in Romania and I know for sure in other countries that I have connections with, this is the same attitude across, across post-communist uh, countries. I think that the work that we're doing in Ukraine is transferable to all of them because yeah. they all speak Russian. And so we see this as a long-term project. We see this as a, a, a very long goal of getting the information in. Every child that I was with in this video um, is really not going to benefit from the work we're doing. They're just too late. But we can change an entire country than China society. The other thing I want to tell you is that doors have opened like nobody's business. I'm and glad. For the first time in Ukraine, they have given a parliament chair for 
autism and have given a big budget for it. And I got to meet this man and he wants to work with us in in getting the information out to the right people. Good. You know, time. So But you need work, some help. You need some help need to some get help. it translated, you, to get you good need information translated. Thirty thousand dollars is what it's going to take. Thirty thousand dollars is what it's going to take. So it, we're going to we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to be joined by Matt Blick. Matt's going to tell us about the film and how people can watch the film. And, and let's start with let tell the folks uh, right now, Tom, how they can actually watch this film to see what's happening for themselves because they can watch it for three, for free online for the next thirty days. Correct. Yes, you can watch it until the 24th of May free. Okay. You go to www.notforgottenthemovie.com. And the only requirement is that you share it with someone via uh, Twitter, email, Facebook, and then you get the permission to see it. So yeah. we're trying to get it out to as many people as possible. Okay. And, and then Matt's going to also tell us about other things that, that are going on with the film. And if yeah. people want to, if people have money to donate, uh, there is a way on your website that they can also donate money, correct? Absolutely. Okay. So Matt will talk about that with us. But again, you know, all month long for Autism Awareness Month, we've been talking about compassion and action. <sighs> And we've said over and over and over again how important it is that we show compassion for people and that sometimes it's a small thing that you can do. So here's a small thing that you can do that doesn't cost any money. You can watch this film and you can share it with one other person and let people know. Imagine all the challenges that you have in your household and if everyone was against you, there were no services to fight for and no one around the world knew what you were going through. Um, imagine, the, you know, those moms who are one who's already given up her child to a horrible situation and another who is thinking about it. And the fact that they, you know, we've all felt alone. Imagine how alone they feel. Share it because doors are opening for them when people understand what's going on. And we're going to take a break. We're going to, we, first of all, we're going to thank you, Tom, for being with us and for the great work that you're doing. You're an amazing man. Well, thank you very much. And we're going to come back with Matt Blick, who uh, is the filmmaker, and he's going to tell us how we can further disseminate this information, what's going on with the film itself, and if you have money to donate or if you want to do a fundraiser for them, how you can make that happen. I'm going to try to mop down and get it together. Stick with us. The services um, overall in Ukraine are significantly behind the services that are in the states. Um, if I had to put a number on it, I would guess about 40 to 50 years behind where intervention is in the states. No, at less than years ago, in Ukraine, the diagnosis of autism was nearly forbidden. I think that in my experience in Ukraine, the level of knowledge of autism is very small. You know, Ukrainian is not a very rich country, and especially the families of children with mental handicap usually are not very rich because fathers very often go away from such family. A mother was alone with child, and she cannot walk. Every child with autism is different. And I think that as a result, the children are getting very little appropriate intervention. I don't know. I'm alone with him. I'm alone with him. I'm alone with him. Просто уже тяжело с ним, конечно. Тяжелее, чем с меньшим. Пока был маленький, он был более шустрый, но я могла с ним справиться. А сейчас, да, и стал агрессивнее, конечно. Жалости нету к нам, что вот у нас двойной ребенок, то, то. Как-то так вот привыкли и все, да. Вот он наш. Ну, у нас еще просто одна проблемка. У нас 9 месяцев начались судороги. 
поэтому некоторые в степени мы уже были готовы к тому, что не все так нормально, как должно быть. Рассказали только близким родителям, знакомым и даже не всем родителям. What I was struck by the more and more that I was there and talking with parents in Ukraine is the similarities. I was lost. I didn't know what to do. And I got hooked up with a parent group. It was a Yahoo group. And um, they led me. But I think as the parents become empowered and learn how to become advocates and have the strength in numbers, that that from bottom up will impact change. Welcome back. You were just watching the trailer for a really important film that everyone should know about called Not Forgotten. It's subtitled The Untold Story of Autism in Ukraine. And we have joining us via Skype Matt Blick. He is the co-producer and the filmmaker for this film. We've had my, uh, excuse me, we've had Matt on the show before about a year ago when they had come back from Ukraine and had the footage. We just were talking with Tom Saxon about this and the fact that we're thrilled that you guys were able to win $10,000 in the contest that you were in, that you've completed the film and done a beautiful job of it. I want to remind everybody that they can watch the film for the next uh, almost 30 days on your website, correct, Matt? Very correct. Yes, yes, it is. And that website is notforgottenthemovie.com. That's okay. correct. So, uh, Matt, you are not somebody who had experience working with kids with autism, and you were a filmmaker, correct? Yes, correct. And so this guy, Tom Saxon, comes to you and says, I think I've got a story that you should make a film about. What's your first thought? Oh, for, for me as an artist and just having the opportunity to go somewhere else and do something creative, um, I jumped at the chance. You know, I was excited to be able, be able to do something um, on that topic. You know, as a creative, you're always looking for new opportunities to kind of stretch yourself and push yourself, even if you don't have um, kind of familiar experience in that. And so basically, I was just, I knew Tom well and this is something I just want to go on a journey with them. And so I'm so glad that we both did it together. It's been an amazing journey. Almost basically two months and a couple of days here, or two years actually, um, since we went over. And pretty much a life-changing experience for you, right? Because uh, this this sort of has become what, what you're doing. Uh, and what what changed for you when you got there? And as you were thinking about making this movie and you got there and you met people, what changed for you? Oh man, that's a great question. Well, you know, when I first started out, it was more of just the idea of doing a documentary that was exciting. Um, I had no clue how this would affect me, um, how it would kind of influence where, you know, where I saw myself as a creative and, and wanting to help others um, and use my gifts um, in more of a, a selfless manner um, and, instead of trying to bring glory to myself or, or my company and what we could do. And so, you know, when we went over, um, I had no clue what I was expecting. I thought I did. Right. But, you know, when you're in there talking to families, when you're talking to mothers who don't have, you know, a husband, you know, the children don't have, you know, fathers, um, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, you know, you you see their helplessness, their hopelessness, and, you know, you think, wow, I have so much better than they do. Um, and you think, how, how can a documentary like this, how can even one translated book make an impact and as you're talking to them you find out that just anything for them that you can give them that you can get into their hands to be able to affect their child just their daily routine to give them a better quality of life yeah is is humbling it's yeah. very humbling well i i have to say uh and i was saying this uh right before we came back to live that i greatly admire you because a whole lot of people talk about oh i'm gonna go on an adventure and i'm gonna go see what there is and they uh they don't get it done and you not only went to see what there was but when you saw what there was and that what there was to be done you were all in and have worked really hard to get this film made so the film is done now 
it's on the site and people can be watching it. Um, and Tom mentioned that a lot of doors are opening and that some exciting things have happened. You've had you've had some people who have given some money. They've seen the 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 germ of the idea here, and said we want to help. But there's a job. There's a bigger job to be accomplished here. What's the bigger job, Matt? Well, the bigger job is basically not just creating awareness, but translating autism books. And a lot of the times, as Shannon, you, you've experienced, you see a lot of documentaries that want to create an awareness. They want to create an awareness. They want to get the word out. They want people to realize what's going on, but they don't really have a goal past that. They think they do, but they don't have a tangible need of, okay, how are we actually going to help these people um, or, or this organization or this, this topic? And for us, the documentary is the way to create the awareness to get the story out there but it's not the end, end goal. Um, and so we want to then take autism books that we have here in the US, translate them into Russian, and then get them over to families, specialists, doctors over there in Ukraine. Um, and because like Tom said earlier, because it's gonna be in Russian, it opens more doors in terms of getting into Romania, getting into Russia itself, other places that if we just did it in Ukrainian, it wouldn't get out as, as far. So this is a more, um, longer reaching goal it's it's there's a lot to be done but we know that um god's blessed us already and he's going to take it further than we could ever expect okay so because i think it's a great point that you make because a lot of times i i think we shy away from things that are just designed to make us feel bad and this documentary is not designed to make us feel bad this documentary is designed to create awareness so that we can all see what we can do and you've talked about the fact that you just at this point thirty thousand dollars tips the balance here right yes yes now, that that sounds like a whole lot of money, but to change autism, the face of autism in a huge region of our world, it's kind of a small amount when you think about it. It is. It is. But so, it, the thing is, the thing is, Shannon, this is, you know, we're just, we just have 10 books in, in, in focus right now. And there's more that Tom has planned, but you know, we've talked to several clinics over here in the U.S. just to see what they're doing in the U.S. And, you know, you walk in, there's one here locally in Peoria. Um, that has just a kind of a library for parents to come and, and borrow, you know, uh, equipment and books. And you just look around like there's so much here yeah. to be able to translate. All. I mean, it, we're just we're just looking at ten books, you know. And there's so much more. You know, thirty thousand will not cover everything that a parent needs right. um, to have translated. But it's the beginning. It's something that will get them hope. That will allow them to be able to, to know what to do with their child. Um, that's why a lot of mothers, as you heard give their child up to the institution or, you know, one other story that Tom didn't mention was that there's a couple in the, in the documentary who had a two-year-old son who's now four and they've divorced. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's are other, you know, things that come into play with that, but, uh, you know, having a child on the autism spectrum really affects that. And being in Ukraine with this shame-based culture, it is, it is rough for parents. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think we get the picture there that, I, you know, just imagining all we we have a lot that we push for here in the United States and we should be uh, because we're trying to make the best possible circumstance. But if we imagine losing everything that we currently have in place, it really uh, makes my heart skip a beat. So tell us, walk us through how does somebody if somebody has money to donate, how do they do it? You can go right to our website at notforgottenthemovie.com and right on there at the top right will be an icon that uh, basically says, you know, donate and you can donate right away to our cause through PayPal, through credit card. Um, you can also send in a check and uh, there'll be information on there what to do as well. Um, it is easier, obviously, with today's technology that just you can do it right online. Um, very simple there. But yeah, right, right on our website. Okay, I'm, I'm there, so I, I'm noticing it. So people have to go to the Take Action button. So if you go to Take Action, that's when the Donate button comes up, and you also get the choice of spreading the word and in the news. But so if you click on the Donate button, that's going to take you uh, to places. Now, here here's my question for you, because a lot of our families that are watching are having financial issues of their own. Mm -hmm. um, but if somebody, like, is there a limit to how, like, if somebody has a dollar to give, can they give that. I know a lot of times there's a consideration of that it costs you 35 cents to be able to process their donation. Uh, if somebody's got a dollar to give, is that possible? 
It is possible. I mean, yeah, we'll take whatever someone's, you know, okay. feeling inclined to give. It, you know, this is definitely worrying for the long haul. And um, if anyone, you know, feels led to give, we will definitely take the donation and okay. we'll be very thankful for that. Because I got to say, you know, sometimes it seems overwhelming. You sit there and you think there were times with autism when, you know, people would ask me for a donation and I would think I'm just trying to stay, stay from being homeless. But usually we can all put together a dollar um, for good karma, right? And I, I had heard a story a couple of years ago about uh, a young man who couldn't afford to go to college and had decided not to. And somebody in his family said, you know, if everybody who hears this donates a dollar, we can make a difference. And they had 60,000 envelopes come with one dollar in them. Wow. And, and I, I've always thought about that and thought how truly powerful. So is there even a, a snail mail address on here? So if somebody wants to pick, put a dollar in an envelope, they can send it to you? Yes. Yeah, we'll, uh, we have that. Uh, you have a way to contact us over email and we can definitely send a, an address okay. out to you. So I'm asking, you know, we've done Compassion in Action all month long, and I'm asking all of you to search your heart, see what you've got, to try to send some translated material to that area of the country. Once it's translated into Russian, then it can help a whole lot of people. If you've got a dollar to stick in an envelope, what a beautiful, beautiful thing to do. So what's the next step for, for you with the film, Matt? The next step for the film is basically film festivals. So we've... With, with the documentary be online for free, um, we you know we, we want to get this out to people. We want people to be able to see it, share it, um, and be able to get in the hands of as many people as possible. So that's our first goal. And then from here on out, what I'm working on is getting it submitted to film festivals because that's another way for other people to see it, um, and it will help you know bring awareness to what we're doing and people will be able to speak to us, um, be able to learn about what we're doing. And you know, like as Tom said, you know, this is a long-term goal. Yeah. And whatever we can do to get the word out there. And that's why we're so thankful for you, Shannon, for having us back on, um, because it allows us to get the word out even more than uh, what we have done before. And it's just amazing to see how people can come together and uh, bring an awareness like this. Well, uh, it's our pleasure to have you here. And I want you to promise me that you'll keep us posted on what you're doing and let us know if we can help in the future. And Definitely. Gosh, I, you know, if there's something else that we can do, because uh, what you're doing is remarkable, and I really respect and admire your mission that you're on. Uh, so thank you guys so much. We want to remind everybody to go to notforgottenthemovie.com. You can watch the entire documentary there. They're allowing you to watch it for free just until, I believe, May 23rd, May 24th is the is the cutoff day. May, May 23rd at midnight. Okay, May 23rd at midnight. But the the, the sort of deal is the caveat is that they're asking you to share it with one other person. That's not a that's not a big thing to do. You can do that and spread the the word, and that costs you absolutely nothing to do. Now, if you want to take it another step further, and I hope that you do, they they're trying to raise thirty thousand dollars to get these books translated, autism books, and information translated into Russian. So thirty thousand dollars will get that done. It it may be that just everyone within the sound of my voice sends one dollar and. And then we go, look, that's done. That's making progress. Uh, and, then, and then we'll let you know what the next step is. For, for now, uh, those are some really good attainable goals that maybe we can all help out with. Matt, I thank you so much. Uh, bless you for what you're doing and keep us posted.